In today's lesson, we're going to learn all about blurring in Premiere Pro. Firstly, we will begin with sharpening a blurry video and then continue to add blur to a footage in order to create some depth. So let's get started. I have four clips and they're all in your resource pack. Import them into Premiere Pro and create a sequence from each one. First, let's begin with blurry videos. It's pretty common to end up with a blurry video after a long day of shooting. Most times you are able to fix this issue with a few tweaks inside Premiere Pro, but other times it may be kind of difficult. So you may have to use more advanced tools such as AI technology. So take a look at this video right now. Uh, we have one side that is more in focus and the other side that is completely blurred out. So if your videos look like this, the chances of you fixing them will be rather slim. This side and using AI technology, you may be able to salvage a video that is completely blurred out like this. But if your video looks like the right side where there is some detail, but it's not exactly sharp, then there is a chance that you can fix it in post production. So if I zoom in right here, the problem is that we're not really seeing the sharp details of the eye and things are not as crystal clear as we'd want them to be. Let's zoom out. Begin by duplicating your video, holding down Option or Alt, clicking and dragging it above. Then go to the Effects menu and look for the Unsharpened Mask. It's inside this folder, added on the top video. Let's zoom right into the eyeball. Effect controls and begin adding to the amount. By default, it's on 50, so just crank this up to somewhere around 200. You don't want to go too up or else you're going to create noise. So um, I think maybe 250 is good for this example. And right away, we can see a lot more from the eyeball. It says before, after. Because this is a mask, I can uh, ask Premiere Pro to only apply the sharpness on the area where there needs to be sharpness. Simply grab the pen tool or any other shape and begin drawing around that area. You don't want to go too extreme, just like a really rough selection. And now I will not get that sharp effect on the blurred areas, because if we do, we're just going to create excess noise. Be sure to soften the edges of your mask and if needed, just track it. But for me, it's pretty good. I don't need to do that. So that's how easily you can fix your blurry videos. There are some other options in the blur and sharpen. We've got some other things like the sharpen effect. This is a more general effect compared to the one that we just used. So if I just zoom in here, I can use the sharpen effect to just add a tiny bit more of a detail. You can see that immediately it brings a lot of noise. So I recommend using this effect and if necessary, go with this one. Let's try 25. This is before, this is after. I'm just going to copy the mask, Command C, Control C. Then select Sharpen, Command V, Control V. And now this effect is limited to her eyeball. Looking good. So now this was before without any effects. This is after. If you saw that these effects are adding a lot of noise to your clip, you can go ahead and add a VR noise reduction effect that we already learned how to use the VR denoise effect, add it on top, then change the amount to something little like 0.08, it can even go lower, and that will just give us a softer look. This is before, this is after. Depending on how much noise it brought to your clips, you can play around with the amount. There we go. Now let's move on to our second example. So here I don't have an eye and my subject is actually pretty far. 
So now let's just use the sharpen effect. Add the sharpen effect right above and then add to the amount. On top of that, I'm going in with the unsharp mask. You can go further than usual because I will be using the denoise effect right after. Maybe 200 for this. And already it's looking pretty good. I'm going to duplicate this and delete the effects from the first one. So just by those two, we were able to bring out some of those details in the flower. If needed, you can also add to the radius underneath on sharp mask. By default, it's on one, but you can go up to like four and get some of those fine lines. Now finish off with the denoise effect, reducing the amount so it doesn't look this flat. And there we go. So now we're not getting all of those noise and we're just keeping the details on the flower. Now my subject is in focus. So this was before, this is after. You can go further with the denoise. Uh, I think I'll go with 0.15 just to get rid of those tiny details. And that's looking good. Now, what if you want to do the opposite? Instead of removing the blur, you want to add to it in order to create depth of field. Depth of field is how you can show the distance between each of the elements in either a photograph or a video. So here, clearly there is a lot of distance between our subject and the landscape. Now, depending on the settings that you have on your camera, you will either get depth of field or not get it at all. So here we're not getting that much of depth of field and therefore I can just achieve it in post-production. Duplicate your clip. And on this one, we want to add a blur effect. Type in blur and we're going to use the fast blur effect. Add it right above. We are choosing fast blur because it gives us the most natural result. And I could just get some blur by adding in to the blurriness amount. I think 15 is good. But now I need to mask it so that it does not go on top of my subject. Simply grab your mask of choice. I'm going to grab this rectangle and place it right over there. Then we're going to increase the mask feather. So zoom out of your clip and pull the top part away so we don't get a feathered effect uh, at the start, but only from this point on. There we go. So we blurred out the mountains in the back by simply adding in the fast blur effect. So I will actually delete my mask one and instead just go around my subject with the pen tool. Starting here, I want to blur out the mountains so somewhere around here and just go around and then just go around the subject. Once you're done, you want to zoom out from your canvas and finish it uh, in a rather large scale because we're going to feather this out and we don't want the softness to reach the uh, corner of our video. Increase the mask feather. Reposition the points if you have to and you're basically done. Because the video is stable, I don't really need to track it, but if yours was moving, then you would want to make a mask around your subject and then track it. That way we will not end up blurring out uh, the subject's body. You can also use a ruler to make sure that your mask path is straight. You can activate the ruler by hitting down Command R or Control R. Once you have your mask ready, now you have created a depth of field effect for your video. You can expand it closer to the edge here, but I'm just going to leave it in the back 
and have it look like the mountains are really far away. Our next example is of this flower. And this is a situation where we need to use a radial mask instead of the mask we were using. Duplicate your clip, add the same fast blur, and then using the radial mask, let's first add maybe 10 to the amount. And the amount that you put for blurriness is really important because you can't just randomly make everything flat. You have to keep in mind the distance between the subject that the camera is focused on and the subjects around it. So in our previous example, the mountains are really far away from our subject. So I have the liberty of adding uh, a good amount, like 15 or so. But in the second example, the leaves are pretty close to the flower, meaning that I cannot just add a large amount because it's going to look unrealistic. Usually the leaves on a flower are pretty close to the petal. And therefore, if our camera were to catch this depth of field, it would not look this extreme. So for this example, 10 is a good number. This is before, this is after. Then grab a mask and place it around the flower leaving some space from the edges because we're going to feather the sides. Now we need to invert the mask so it doesn't go on the flower and then finally feather the edges. So now this is looking a lot more realistic than if I were to put a large number. Now for this one, we're going to have to track the mask since it does move around. I'm going to hit M on the frame that I set the first mask and just track the mask going forward. So creating depth and fixing blurry videos is not that hard in Premiere Pro as long as the video does have the possibility of it being fixed. So like we said, if your video is just way too blurry, like uh, this side of the model, then saving it and making it sharper is unlikely. You want to work with videos that have a tiny bit of blurring, meaning that the details are there and we just want to make them pop and be sharper. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the next one.